Hey roadies, this is Adriana from Roadie Free Radio. In this episode, Larry speaks with Larry Martin, founder and owner of Tour Supply. Larry is your go-to supplier for all types of gear and equipment for your show, event, and even cruise ship. In this short clip, we learn about the beginnings of Tour Supply and what sparked Larry to start it. If you want to hear more about Larry, make sure to check out the full episode number 156 from February 4th, 2020. Thank you for listening and thank you for subbing. Enjoy the show. The fifth Beatle, so to speak, that would be uh, Magoo, Mm -hmm. James McGregor. He's out, he tours with Beyonce and uh, pretty much all the the giant uh, R&B acts. And uh, he was a friend of Prince growing up, mm. and I believe uh, I believe he gave Magoo his parents' house back in the '90s or something. But uh, he was the guy that would tell the new guitar tech, or tell the production manager, or tell the keyboard tech, or whatever. Call, where can I get this from? Just call this guy; he'll get it for you. He'll wow. he'll, he'll make it happen. Yeah. So we got to we got to bring up the fifth Beatle of, yeah. of the the fifth tour supply guy or whatever. Right. 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 And uh, Magoo was that guy, and we still, you know, we still, we still see each other, still talk, and still hang out. That's awesome. Yeah, I imagine you have a a lot, or even just a few of those guys. For I you do that are, that but are... I think the, the Magoo thing is is a, <clears throat> was a, is a special thing because he really did bring a lot of. Uh, I guess the other one would have been George Webb with Pearl Jam back okay. in the early '90s because yep. Pearl Jam was touring so much. Oh yeah, nonstop. I think nonstop for three years. Yeah. You know, and then they took a little bit of a break, but they, where did you get your stuff? Where did you get that Sony wireless? Where did you get, you know, where do you get your gear? Right. And being out on the road and they were not, well, they were just out there and telling, telling people, just call Larry. So that's all. How does that make you feel when you think back on it? It's great. Think back on the, on the, on your career starting like that. You know, how does it make you feel to know that you had those connections, you fostered those connections and you had their trust? Yeah, I think it's all about trust. You know, I was talking with George the other day. They're going out on tour. They're going to be buying a bunch of uh, bunch of stuff. And he's still with them with Pearl George. Jam? George has been the equipment manager since day one. Wow! And he's still with them. And and he, you know, he was <clears throat> joking about, well, so the price is going to come down now, right, Larry? <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> probably going to be about the same. Yeah. And he, no, you know, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. So, yeah, we still have these, we still have these, uh, I still have a lot of great relationships with my, with my road crew friends. And I bet. Yeah. It's, and it's makes it fun to go to work. Right. You know? Right. It's, Every day is basically different. Yeah. New challenges arise. I get to see people like that, that. Uh, that, that I work with over that I've known probably for 20 or 30 years. I get to see them and they come in and yeah, get to get to get catch up. And what prompted the move to LA? Yeah. Snow. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> Check this out. So <clears throat> 25 below zero, typical Minnesota winter winter day. Winson, the guy that owns Third Encore here, you know, you guys are sending packages here almost every day. Why don't you open up a shop here? Okay. <laughs> My wife and I and the kids were out here in less than a month. Wow. Sold the house. Now when is that? How January long? of 2002. Or some, so I should say spring of 2002. I'm not sure the month. All right. Now we we may have jumped around and I apologize for not knowing the specifics ahead of time. But so 2002, you're, are you already tour supply? 1998. Okay. Was tour supply. I broke away from Torps. Okay. Um, Yeah. Broke away from Torps and just started tour supply. Tour supply. With the goal of servicing the touring professional out there, just like you do now. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And you open an office, yeah, out of uh, my friend's house. <laughs> that was, yeah. I, I, these things just kind of seem to just, I don't know, they fall into place. Yeah, I am in my car and I am going up to talk to uh, my 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 business partner at the time, and and because we were, John John pulls up in his car. Hey, Larry, what are you doing? So well, I'm going to go talk to talk to my, my buddy here about starting a, starting a business. Do you need some money? Well, probably. Right. Well, come and see me after your after your after your meeting. Okay. And uh, so we went had the meeting with uh, with my partner and uh, 
We went over and saw John afterwards and think, well, we could, we could, we could work out of your house here. Yeah. I'm here by myself. I got this big house. You can, you know, do it out right here. Well, that sounds good. Let's do it. And, uh, he, he was the first investor. He's, he's, here's my American express card. Just pay it off every month. Okay. Jesus. And he wants to, he's, he, <clears throat> he is a blues guy. Um, Pretty well respected blues guy in the, in the Minneapolis uh, Cooker John he goes by in the Minneapolis St Paul Twin Cities blues scene. Okay, he's well respected in that community, but he 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 had he had some money. Wow, and he wanted to get involved and yeah, that's he, amazing. He was more he was really a silent partner because he was he he didn't really have any. He was just wanted to hear what was going on. And, sure, sure. He just kind of wanted to be in touch. Yeah. Yep. So it was you and your partner. And you're married at the time? Yep. Kids at the time? Yep. You break away from Torp? Torps, yep. Torps. And you're going to start your own thing. Were you nervous? <clears throat> yeah. But I knew, you know, I, I, I have a good sense of of feelings of yeah. things are going to be okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you ran that, it sounds like, what, for about four or five years? Already. What uh, first phone call? Because now the old boss didn't pay for the cell phone. So all my guys, it was a very bad mistake, owner, business owners. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, my all my contacts had my cell phone number. So the first call I got was from the, the Neil Young Crazy Horse Camp. Yeah. And, hey, Larry, what are you doing? Well, I just started my business yesterday. I'm glad you have my number. And, you know, what do you need? Well, I heard about this new digital wireless, the X-Wire. So it was... Yeah, let's let's uh, let's do it. You know what? It wasn't Neil Young. It was I'm, I'm sorry. That was the second one. Uh, Rod Stewart uh, was the first was the first uh, the first sale. new client. First, well, the first right. sale, yeah, right? For right. Uh, for and then the second one was crazy crazy horse Neil Young. Yeah, so we had I had my people. Yeah, you know that that I normally got my phone calls from. Not a lot of them actually called directly to the music store. They a lot of them just called the myself because sure. I was always, I was gone out of the shop a lot too. Right. And you were the guy. I was the guy. Right. Call Larry. Yep. yep. That's amazing, man. So I kind of scattered all <clears throat> over. I'm not sure where it was. So we're, you know, we, where are we at here on the, we're about 2000. Well, we jump, yeah, we jump back to the start of it and then you, you get a call around 2002. Yeah. For the third encore and we started out in, well, similar, similar thing would happen with so it John's didn't, place. it didn't take much to sell your wife and kids on, let's go out to California. No, because we were thinking about moving someplace warm anyway, because okay. it was 10 years, no snow, bitter cold. Yeah. In the wintertime, like yeah. October to uh, May. Yeah. That's what we're dealing with in New England right now. You know, it's like one or two snowstorms and the rest is like freezing rain and super cold. Yeah. That's it. That's like no fun. No, no fun. Yeah. And it's brown, no snow. It doesn't yeah. look, it's, it yeah. looks gross. And yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we moved out here. And, uh, but a similar type of thing. When we moved into John's house, we started in one room, moved to another room, moved to another room, moved to another room. Hey, should we, we moved to the garage. Should we start moving upstairs to these upstairs rooms? <laughs> No, no, no. You need to get out and get your own place. <laughs> so what happened here when we moved to third, when we did move out there, we were there for about a year in Bloomington, Minnesota by the airport. And then we moved out here and we went to a small, small place here in LA and, and mm. at third encore. And then we took over another locker and another locker and another locker and another locker. <laughs> and then we, you got like, a, and then one of the people moved out a large room. So we, I think Gibson or something was in the bigger room. Mm. So we, we moved into there and we've been in the same spot at third encore for whatever it is, yeah. 18 years or something like that. Hey, what's happening roadies. It's Larry here. Just wanted to thank you so much for listening to this short clip. I really hope you got something out of it. If you can take two seconds to head over to iTunes and drop us a review or a comment, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Keep listening. Keep coming back. Stay healthy out there. And remember, no roadies, no rock and roll.